Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Day 1 Righteous Fire Juggernaut progression. Uh, so if you guys are not aware, this will be a series and this is going to be the first in the series. So today we're going to recap pretty much everything that we did. Um, so let us get started. Uh, we are currently level 71 on our jug. Uh, I'm not going to do this every time, but we've played now for about... Uh, eight hours and two minutes everything is live on twitch so you guys can all check that if you want the recorded vod this is what our skill tree is currently looking like we are working on call to arms at the moment so we pretty much followed the standard progression like i was talking about uh, i'm really liking this so far the minion instability has been or sorry the spiritual aid has been a great help with getting everything set up so i'm really liking it at the moment we're kind of in an aoe setup because uh it just really helps with map clearing right now <clears throat> um even though the hp looks a little bit low we are currently deathless as well and our progression for our lab ascendancy was untiring unflinching unyielding and then i want to go unbreakable i have been against unyielding for such a long time but with righteous fire unyielding actually feels so good in the early stages and then of course when you get damage and you get aoe from like your righteous fire level 20 breakpoint and you know a few other things you can always remove unyielding for say like unstoppable or unrelenting if you prefer um the goal for me is taking unbreakable next lab and then uh far later probably replacing unyielding for unstoppable or unrelenting but with that being said i'm going to jump into a quick map and then we're going to talk about the gear itemization etc so we haven't really gone very far uh since we just started so let me go go throw in this t4 map over here this is actually our highest yet consecrated ground that's kind of spook actually Okay, so I know uh, previously I was telling you guys that I was going to use uh, efficacy, but for now I'm just using ink AoE still because my damage still feels fine. I don't know if I should do delirium. It's probably not very smart, actually. Okay. Infernal Cry is going to help massively for clearing packs. We don't have it yet. We get it in just a few levels. We're 71, so by 75 we should have Infernal Cry. I was expecting the damage to actually be a lot worse than it is, uh, so I have to say spiritual aid is really, really helping a lot. Same thing with unyielding, really helping a lot with the early stages of damage scaling. Honestly, I this, I don't really want to do delirium for this. Let's just get actually wait. Oh, this is this is enchant. Yo, this is so good. Because this means if I get an if I get an offering, then I can wake up tomorrow and literally do Uber Lab at level 71. Oh man, okay, I have to do the delirium here. No, 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 no. Okay, this way, this way, got it. Uh uh, uh oh god. Uh da, 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 faster! I cannot do oh, I think we failed it. Wait, is it still going? I think I failed it. Damn it, I didn't get one. No. Oh, that sucks. That's okay. Uh, this go around, unlike the previous SSF run, we are not going to do the uh, Betrayal strat where we lock our character to like 72 or whatever and D-level. We're just going to wing it and just kind of go. Mobs, hello? Where are the mobs at? Anyway, uh, so we got Righteous Fire set up on our first lab, actually. We were sustaining at level 36. Yeah, 36 we did our first lab. Or I guess I was 35 and in the lab I leveled to 36. It was a little sketchy at first, but literally every level just made it get better and better and better because of your vitality scaling and in general just how all of your percentage regeneration works. Because as Marauder, you get a lot of percentage regen early. Yum. Ooh, damage over time rank too. Nice. The single target I thought was going to be way worse. And again, we're in very early maps still, but it's really not that bad at all. 
All right, good, map cleared. So, uh, let's go ahead and go over our gear with the links in them and so on and so forth. As for the Atlas, because I know people are gonna ask on this, I'm gonna go Kirak missions. I don't Kirak mission and Jun probably. I kind of want to do shrines because I'm addicted to shrines in general. I love my shrines, so it's probably going to be Kirak first, then this shrine wheel, and then probably Jun. All right. Um, so let's talk about our gear. Uh, I got this weapon at uh, around Act Two. Uh, I identified a random scepter and it rolled fire multi. I said that's good enough. Crafted fire damage. That's our weapon. Uh, currently in there, we've got malevolence, tempest shield, and determ. Now, to set up all my auras, I am currently running this cluster or this mastery, whatever it's called, aura section here. Um, and that's it. I have basically just this. And that, that literally gets me Determination, uh, Malevolence, and Tempest Shield. Okay, going on to the next part. Um, helmet. So, Helmet just has Life, Chaos Res, a Resistance Roll. Don't ask how I have a Tempest Shield enchant there. SSF, by the way, it just gave it to me in my Merc lab, so I said, okay. Um, this is Fire Trap, Swift Affliction, Life Tap, Trap, and Mine. Uh, I do have to modify my filter because this character does not have a proper filter. I'm gonna probably turn off Armor ES gear, although Armor ES gear is very good for getting the links, but the ES doesn't help me at all. But um, Armor Evasion gear is not bad at all for Fire Trap because you know, you're much more likely to get your colors and colors are a big deal in the early game in my opinion. And then later on when you have a bunch of currency, that doesn't matter. Uh, chest piece, we have Elemental Focus, Ink AoE, Righteous Fire, Burn Damage. Nothing really very special on here. In fact, it's missing a suffix. I can't believe I didn't craft a suffix, wow. Uh, okay, we got uh, Amulet here, nothing crazy. It's basically just for attributes, not really anything special. Um, rings, rocking pretty good rings, to be honest. I'm very lucky with these. This one was unveiled. Um, you know, John, of course, I love John, right? The unveiling got really nice. I, I rolled the uh, life regen on there. So we're actually already rocking um, currently 16% chaos res, and I will most likely be taking Asylum. So with an Amethyst Flask in like five levels, I'm already chaos capped, so that's great. Uh, my shield is really bad. It has essentially nothing going for it, but res, we are running Arrogance Vitality here. So the trick with Arrogance Vitality is if you look at my life regen, my vitality is reserving about 400 life, but it's giving me 300 life per second. Now, I don't know how worth it this is, but it hasn't caused me to die at all yet, so I'm currently really liking it. One of the big things to note is when I am tanking mobs, um, because of our ascendancy here, unbreakable, is that? Untiring, untiring. Let me uh, show you an example of what happens with Jug when you face tank mobs. Um, oop, not that one. Where is, uh, ooh, doo, 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 doo. where is Stone Golem? Okay, go away. Right, let's go like Act 9, Blood Aqueduct, and let us turn off our Tempest Shield because it's literally going to kill the mobs. Okay, so when you mitigate damage with Jug, you actually gain life regen. Um, and this number gets significantly higher the higher tier of content you're in. And what I mean by that is the more you mitigate, the more regeneration you get, right? So for example, if we look here, this is 1.5% of physical damage from hits, uh, prevented from hits is added as life regen. And that region, I'm quite sure, scales with increased life regenerate, although I could be wrong there, right? Um, so that that's why we put a very big emphasis on mitigating physical damage, because when you are able to face tank, you don't have to worry about your sustain. Now, this is also why we really want Unbreakable for later, because Unbreakable will help us massively with elemental mitigation, right? At the moment, we don't have to worry. We're still in the low tier content, right? Okay, uh, let's go over the, the, the rest of our gear now. So on here again, we have the Arrogance Vitality with the flammability. And one would ask, you know, but Pox, why do you want to reserve 400 HP when you get 2000 regen when you're mapping? And that's because when you're fighting like an elemental boss, that regen does not help you at all, right? Because it's pure elemental, it's not physical, so it's not being mitigated that way. All right, uh, next up, we've got, um, got our boots here. Uh, I got these boots actually just recently. I, I ID'd them and they're tri-res with movement speed. No life open, but still very good. This is currently where our Frost Blink resides. So I've got Hex Touch, Frost Blink, Flammability, and Life Tap. Normally I would not need Life Tap here, but because of my current MP uh, situation, I have 17 mana. 
uh, it feels much better to just life tap it. If I want the MP, I can take the termination mono reservation here and that will fix it. I'm actually not even using Molten Shell yet, although I, I should be. Um, belt, nothing crazy, just life res with some regen. Gloves, nothing crazy, just some, you know, really shitty gear. I don't even have really anything crazy. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where the character is now at 71. As I'm pushing higher level, I can see myself going into Bloodless, uh, taking Call to Arms for our Warcry, um, potentially taking a Mastery for uh, reduced crit damage taken. I don't really have to worry too much about Mana Reservation until we want Skitterbots, but I don't think Skitterbots is going to be for a little bit. Uh, I have to get a Jewel because we have a one-point Jewel open right here. Um, of course, we want to work on getting exposure on our gloves. Other than that, I don't really know where the, the rest of our points are going. Oh, sorry, yeah. Down here, we're going to grab Asylum. Um, so that's another set of our points. So, I mean, really, the next 10 levels I can see, let's see, one, two, three, four. Maybe the mastery is five. Uh, we've got a point here for a six. Then down here, we've got seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, so that's already nine points. And then determination, mastery, and or the other one, 10, potentially 11. Uh, so that puts us to 81 already. Um, yeah, so uh, this is also not too bad for points. This is a 16% damage node with a 20% damage node. Um, so that makes them basically 18%, and that's, that's very good. Especially because that damage also affects Infernal Cry because it's global damage. So I'm really liking that. Uh, other than that, our next big part is moving 1, 2, 3 over here. So we can grab Cruel Preparation along with Breath of Flame's Heart of Flame. But damage at the moment is not a problem. I'm very much okay with, with our current character. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. So... Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, of course, if you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Mondays. Uh, and then the only other thing I would like to plug is as we play through this character, I will be updating this sheet right here. So at the moment, day one is going to have this video right now that we're talking about right here. And as I work through, you will see me check mark a lot of things over here. But yeah, that's it. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.